astonished by our next caller. It's George from Minot, North Dakota. George, you're the yes. longest distance I have ever gotten a call. <laughs> well, I, I, I try to listen at least once or twice a week. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm from Conway, and uh, it just keeps me in touch with, uh, with, with being home, the program. I'm thankful I can get it on the web. And, yeah, I imagine you uh, can't get grits or shrimp or things like that too easily. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're warm. making me homesick now. <laughs> George, <laughs> what's, what's going on out in Minot? I really appreciate the uh, the topic today. Uh, I've, I've actually learned a little bit. Um, I work at night, and, I, and of course my job, I interact a lot with, uh, with, with traffic and vehicles. And one thing that I'm concerned with, I, I wrap myself up in reflective material, but I've learned about uh, from today about, about placement. But I'm concerned that I look like a barrel, and I'm I'm going to be a, a target. Has there been uh, sort of a follow-up on the previous caller? Has there been any studies on the color of the reflective material along with the placement, be it white or blue or yellow or red, that uh, tends to draw more attention or uh, stand out better uh, for the vehicle operator as, as a pedestrian to wear? There has been some research on the on the color and optimum use of color, but there hasn't been a whole lot. You know, in daytime use, um, there's a, a a bright fluorescent yellow that's or lime green is the name of it that has been adopted as the standard for ways to mark pedestrian locations. So if you see a pedestrian crossing sign, it's likely to be lime green, and that color isn't used for anything but pedestrian mornings. But to actually mark the pedestrian, the key thing is to get light regardless of the color, and to get it where it's needed, which is the parts of the body that move. Um, typically, when they engineer color into the retroreflective material, they put filters over it to reduce the amount of unwanted light so it comes out the color that you want. Uh, and, and that's a bit frustrating from my view because I'd rather take away the filters and get as much light out there mm -hmm. as possible. Mm -hmm. uh, also with that is... Has there been? Uh, have you looked at uh, as a driver uh, if the person is colorblind or not? Uh, does that affect um, uh, what they see and what they perceive? That's a great experiment, George, and I'm, um, I'd be happy to accept your funding to, to do that <laughs> experiment. <laughs> George, maybe we can get you a trip back here so you can talk it out. Um, That'd that be great. That, that's great, and thanks for calling. I, I hate to have you hang up because I know we're sort of a lifeline for you, but we got to move on. Thanks right, a thank lot. You. Sure enough.